Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to talk about subgroups. So here's the setup. We're going to let G be a group. So here star is the binary operation. B a group. And we're going to say a subgroup of G Well, first and foremost, it is a subset. So is a subset, which we will call H, such that H is also a group. under the same operation. So under the same operation star. So a subgroup of a group is just a subset of that group that's also a group under the same operation as your group, right? So the operation is maintained. So in this video we're just going to look at various examples of uh, subgroups. So let's start with g equal to the set of integers. And the operation here will be addition. So addition. And then one subgroup um, could be maybe h, which we'll denote as 3z. And this is the set of all multiples of 3. Multiples of 3. So we can write this more precisely as the set containing 3 times n such that n is an integer. And the operation here will be the same, so plus is equal to addition. So this is a subset of G, and it's also a subgroup. So H is a subgroup of G. Likewise, you can look at 5G, 5Z, 2Z, etc. Here is another example. Uh, say you have a group G, so G is a group. And something nice happens. It turns out that the set containing E and the group G itself are both subgroups of G. So they're both subgroups of G. So E and G are always subgroups of G. Let's look at another example. If you have G being a group, so if G is a group, and X is an element in G, then you can show that the set generated by X, so all of the powers of X, written this way for using multipl multiplicative notation, and this guy is a subgroup. of G. Always. Always. So given any element in G, you can look at all of the powers of G, all of the powers of X, sorry, and that is always going to be a subgroup of G. So the cyclic group generated by X for any X is always a subgroup of G. Really, really useful fact um, that's often used. Let's look at another example. Say we have the additive group of integers modulo 4. So this is the set containing 0, 1, 2, and 3. And let's look at the cyclic subgroup generated by 2. So this is all the powers of 2. So we have 2, 2, circle plus 2. Well, that's 4, but it's modulo 4. So 4 goes into 4 one time, the remainder is 0. 
Then if we do 2, circle plus 2, circle plus 2, we get 6. 4 goes into 6 one time, the remainder is 2. So this is just the group containing 0 and 2. This is a subgroup of z sub 4, the additive group of integers modulo 4. Notice uh, it's a subset, and it's a proper subset. So it's called a proper subgroup. So random fact, a subgroup H of G is called proper is called proper if H is not equal to G, right? So um, it's called a proper subgroup. Also, sometimes uh, the notation uh, for subgroups, I've seen this before. I'm not sure how common this is. Um, you can use a, a less than or equal to sign. So if you say H is less than or equal to G, this means this means subgroup, subgroup. And then for proper, you could do something like this, perhaps. Okay, or, or something like this, perhaps, the strict inequality. So these, these maybe could mean proper, depending on what you're reading, uh, what, who the author is, and all of that. But that's convenient notation when you're writing subgroup over and over and over again. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, here's another one that's pretty interesting. So let G be a group. This one's pretty nice. And we're going to let z of g be equal to the set of all x's in g such that xg is equal to gx for all g and g. So it's the set of all the x's in g that commute with every element in g. So this is called the center of g. And it is a subgroup. So zg is a subgroup of G, right? ZG is a subgroup of G. Let's look at another example. Why not? We'll take G to be the general linear group of order N. So this is the set of all N by N matrices. Uh, with complex entries, I should have said complex matrices, and non-zero determinant, non-zero determinant. In other words, they are invertible, determinant. So this is called the general linear group. Sometimes it's called the general linear group of order n uh, because of the n. Then we'll let h be equal to SL n of c. This is called the special linear group. Okay. This is all n by n, this time I'll say it to save some time, complex matrices. That means that the entries are complex numbers with determinant 1. With determinant, determinant 1. Very important group. So H is a subgroup of G. So the special linear group is a subgroup of the general linear group. Sometimes you'll see different notation for this, by the way. Sometimes for G, you'll see GLN of C, so you might see that. And then for H, you'll see SLN of, of C, just again, depending on the author and what you are reading. Um, I think that's good. Um, I hope this video has been helpful. Maybe in the next video, I'll show you how to prove um, a set is a subgroup. That's it.